Hi everyone, Sleepy Soul here, and in today's video we're going to talk about two relatively recent IPO companies that just reported earnings in the last uh, 48 hours by the time you guys watch this video, uh, that are uh, interesting on pullbacks, mostly because they're operating as uh, mini Berkshire Hathaways. Um, uh, and those two companies are, as you might be guessing based on one of the pictures in front of you, Airbnb and, and Robinhood, uh, Robinhood uh, Investments. Um, as usual, if you guys like these videos, click the like and subscribe button down below. But uh, and then, le but let's jump in. Uh, so Airbnb reported uh, Wednesday, the 13th after hours, and the quarter was was fine. It wasn't it wasn't a great quarter. We'll talk about the numbers in general. It's just so you know, metrics wise, on a forward looking basis, at like 28 times this uh, 2024's earnings, uh, which is pretty pretty expensive when compared to Expedia, Booking, and uh, Travelers, but. It's uh, but it's got a thing, or it's got something that the rest of them don't have, and we'll cover that in a second. But the revenue numbers, again, it's about a 90 uh, as an enterprise value. It's about an 80-ish billion dollar company. I think it's like 83 billion after the the close of Thursday, uh, or Wednesday the 14th, excuse me, um, after the close on the Wednesday the 14th. Uh, it did just under 10 billion dollars, so it's trading just under, or just more than eight times revenue. Uh, it made eight. Uh, uh, net income was almost $5 billion to shareholders. That's really good. Adjusted EBITDA was solid. Uh, oh, yeah. Year-over-year -year growth was eight, is 18% on revenue. Uh, uh, was 3x, basically, um, uh, for net income uh, comparatively to last year, as in 2022. Free cash flow was $3.8 billion. We'll get to that number in a second, but this is just fantastic. It's trading at about a four, sub, uh, almost a 5% free cash flow yield, which is great. Uh, uh, gross booking value GMV or GB, GBV is up 16% year over year. Uh, nights and experience are up 14% year over year. The number doesn't actually matter. They then go in through the shareholder uh, letter, and and really the crux of the item is they're buying back 6% of their shares, uh, and they're also trying to explore different verticals. And this is this is this part expanding beyond the core. Uh, we spent the past three years perfecting our core services. Now we're ready to embark on our next chapter to unlock more opportunities for growth. We're investing in underpenetrated international markets, and we're seeing great results. Uh, you know, we're expanding expanding our playbook to include countries like Switzerland, Belgium, and the Netherlands. We believe now is the time to expand beyond our core business and reinvent Airbnb. This will be a gradual multi-year journey, and we're excited to to share uh, more about this later in 2024. So this is a little bit of a red flag. Um, uh, we're going to explain why it's Baby Buffett and, or Baby Berkshire in a little bit. But going through their earnings, this is a little bit of a red flag. Airbnb does something very well. It does a unique uh, visitation experience that you can rent, especially when you're in a large group. Uh, renting a home or, or condo is, is fantastic. It's often uh, at parity with hotels. And usually the longer you stay, the better the, the, better the value proposition goes uh, for Airbnb. They also do stuff that are like Airbnb experiences, kind of similar to uh, like TripAdvisor. Uh, what they do and you can book things through them. Um, but them expanding to, let's call it non-travel related entities. Now, maybe they add a, a rental car feature, but but this usually screams like management is bored and they're going to do something stupid uh, because they're bored. Uh, they have a solid business and we'll talk about why that business is so solid in a second. Um, and go from, uh, but but this is this is something that kind of raises a red flag. So, uh, Q4 revenue again was 2.2 billion, up 17% year over year. Q4 net loss was 350 million. Uh, this is one of the reasons the stock sold off yesterday uh, or today and, and yesterday after hours, the 13th. It's, uh, sorry, it's mostly due to non-reoccurring uh, tax treatment. So we could kind of and a prepayment of other related one-time items. So you can kind of ignore this. The, the, there was uh, the, the adjustment makes it positive. Uh, I do want to point out the free cash flow was 46 million dollars. Uh, including not including the non-reoccurring tax items. So uh, if if you uh, you know comparatively to last year, uh, last year they did 463 million. Now obviously they had the the uh, the adjusted um, where was it here the non-reoccurring of expenses of one billion dollars, um, excluding those some of those on the on the net loss it was 489 million positive. So they're growing. They grew the uh, net income 
if you exclude the one-time items by about a third. So free cash flow, you could probably estimate uh, to be close to that growth. So you could probably estimate about half a billion dollars of free cash flow uh, if you adjust out the numbers. Um, and then they repurchased $750 million worth of shares in Q4. Uh, there's some business highlights. We don't really need to focus on that, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Then you talk about you know what the app looks like. I want to point out what makes them interesting though. Uh, you know, blah, 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 stuff about the trips. Um, apologies. Uh, where is the, here it is. Sorry. I apologize. I skipped right past it. Balance sheet and cash. So for the three months ending on December 31st, we reported $63 million of cash provided by operations and $46 million of free cash flow compared to 463 to, and 455 respectively. I already explained why that there's a discrepancy with the one-time items. Um, uh, as of December 31st, they had $10.1 billion of cash and cash equivalents, short-term investments and restricted cash. They also had... 5.9 billion of funds held for guests as of December 31st, 2023. So on that 10.1 billion, they're they're doing a uh, hundred and twenty-five ish million um a million dollars a quarter in interest income. That's how much they're getting from that. So that you I I noted uh up above um. We'll scroll up here. Uh, where is it? Do, 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 do. They repurchased 750 million uh, shares. Now, this assumes no growth on their operation, right? This is just their balance sheet. They could, at, with current interest rates being the way they are, they could buy back $125 million of shares every quarter without issue, uh, basically for free, just because of interest that the that the income is throwing off on the uh, from the cash pile. So that plus the six billion, which is another roughly what seventy million dollars uh, of money, assuming that number just kind of stays constant, but it's because it's held cash. Uh, it is probably invested in the short term money market fund or, or or at least a high yield savings of some kind. So you're looking at almost two hundred million dollars. Airbnb is throwing off a quarter. That is a quarter. I want to be very clear. Um, because again, it's roughly $16 billion. 5% of 16 is 800 million. So 200 a quarter, 200 or 800 divided by four is, uh, is 200 million, right? So that's how we get those numbers. So it's throwing off 200 million a quarter in cash flow. That allows them to buy back shares aggressively. And that's one of the reasons there's a multiple uh, difference between like them and Expedia, which owns VRBO, which you could kind of make an argument. And, and I, I, it's kind of six of one half dozen the other that VRBO is growing faster uh, than Airbnb, but that's not neither here nor there. They're both kind of growing at TAM uh, v, um, uh, and Airbnb is still the dominant player, but you see that with, with the share reduction, right? So they were purchased 2.25 uh, billion. And again, they, this is a profitable company. Airbnb does make money. I'm not just, this isn't like Peloton that has a big cash balance sheet. They're just pulling down that cash to fund operations. They do make, positive free cash flow and they're reducing stock right you can see here it's about a two and a half percent reduction per year that looks to continue they're, again they announced a six percent stock buyback they're probably going to buy back about three percent a year it's probably going to accelerate from the two and a half percent to three percent especially uh if you assume the stock price is going to be flat or down because the broader market index if you think the stock's going to be up that it's probably going to be about two and a half percent but a six billion dollar buyback is impressive given the uh, market cap uh, capitalization. Again, this is the trailing uh, free cash flow numbers. Uh, you know they're doing 3.8 billion dollars of free cash flow uh, in fiscal year uh, in 2023. Now, again, remember some of this is stock-based comp, and and you know they they are they have to use some of these to fund operations, various other things. So, and they are debt-free. That's the other thing to know. They are debt-free, so they don't have to worry about debt. So, you know, they used a lot of this free cash flow plus the cash that's generating. And remember, some of that cash that's generating becomes this free cash flow. So, you know, they're using 2.25. Five billion to repurchase stock. You could probably make an argument again. They're going to do about three a three billion dollar run rate. Seems about right for Airbnb. Um, uh, let's go. 
I want to go back to the revenue numbers. Um, so they wanted to point, they pointed out that uh, the revenue uh, for fiscal year 23 was up 18%. Okay. Here's the problem. It was up 40% year over year from 22 to 21. Now, 18% growth on, on a larger base is solid. Okay. It still grew at uh, close to, uh, close to a, a uh, what was it? Uh, 1.8 uh, or what? Sorry, yeah, 1.6 billion dollars in terms of revenue. So it was solid, like it was solid revenue growth. But but the rate of the rate of change of the revenue growth was negative about 50 percent. So you know again from 40 percent to 18, it's like 55 percent actually exactly. So this is a little worrisome if the revenue number continues to decelerate. Again, it's trading at 28 times future future earnings. It's a profitable company, so the company the, the investors don't need to worry about that, and the large cash pile keeps it supportive. But that's very rich to be buying a company that's seen decelerating revenue growth. Just just again, if you're in the camp that and I mentioned this in my video about how the consumer is starting to reject higher prices. If you're in the camp, that the consumer is going to start pulling back from discretionary spends. You might want to wait for a pullback to buy Airbnb, Airbnb uh, given the revenue deceleration. Uh, the, on the flip side of that, and it's not here, is operation uh, expenses are going up. They went from 19% growth year over year to 27% growth. Now, they are they, they said specifically it's related to a couple one-time charges. Uh, that's kind of take it or leave it uh, in terms of what you believe, but it is, you know, it is an area that's growing when your revenue growth is slowing. And remember Airbnb, the reason they are profitable is during COVID for the, in 2020, they had to really right size the business. They did a massive round of layoffs, like basically the depths of COVID because the business, like they were about to IPO, I think originally in like May or June of 2020, obviously couldn't because their numbers were just terrible. And it, they had to really, really focus on profitability. And that's one of the reasons why they have this massive cash pile because they are now a profitably run tech company. Uh, again, the operating um, income is kind of negligible uh, because again, this number is, is mostly derived from one-time items. So you, so you just kind of want to ignore those uh, and stock-based comp. Again, I mentioned that in the operating expenses part, it has gone up and they mentioned it. Uh, yeah. I hate the shareholder weather. Uh, uh, hold on. Apologies. Um, uh, so operating expenses of Q4 included the impact of 290 million of stock-based comp uh, expenses, which ex which are excluded from adjusted EBITDA. All operating expenses in line, excluding the impact of stock-based comp expenses, with the exception of general administrative expenses, more slowing year-over-year -year than revenue, allowing co for considerable margin expansion. So again, oh man, it was right below where I was looking. I apologize, guys. And this is the part about stock-based comp, the more in detail part. As it, as anticipated, full year of 23 stock-based comp expense was 20% higher than full year 22. Okay, you never really want to see stock-based comp going up that aggressively, uh, especially when your company is in theory slowing revenue growth. Uh, the increase in stock-based comp ex exceeded the headcount growth over the same same period due to accounting for our restricted stock units awarded, which changed over time. We anticipated similar year-over-year -year growth stock-based comp expenses in 2024. Beyond 24, after the last double-digit uh, double-trigger RSUs, which we stopped issuing after our IPO in December of 2020, have vested or expired, we anticipate that stock-based comp expenses will grow largely in line with headcount growth. So what they're saying is that you're going to see 20% stock-based comp growth uh, this year which do make up a portion of their free cash flow. We mentioned that already, uh, but it just won't be as aggressive. Um, so just something to keep a note of. Again, stock-based comp going up is never a good thing. Total liabilities were up slightly. Again, they don't really have any significant debt. It's in terms of, it's all short-term uh, stuff. It's not like bonds. Uh, and then net income loss per share is, is again, uh, smaller, but that's because of the one-time items. So broadly speaking, you know, Airbnb is pretty interesting because again, they have this $10 billion cash pile plus, uh, oops, this is Robin Hood or Robin Hood. We're not there yet. Uh, they have this $10 billion cash pile. They're a $96 billion company. If you net that off, they're an $86 billion enterprise value. Um, they also are a company that has another $6 billion approximately that in held funds that you could you generate a float off of. That's really what makes them a mini Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire is 
real value and why it never really goes down that aggressively is uh, they buy cash flow producing stocks and then use that cash flow to either buy more stock or to protect the insurance business. Um, and that, that's called the float. So Airbnb is really managing the float. As long as they keep generating, again, 200-ish million dollars a quarter, they'll be able to buy back shares in droves and this will steadily grind higher. Now, that doesn't mean it won't go lower first. So again, it's been on this uptrend since basically the COVID low. I did this on the weekly, so the chart's a little little wonky. But you could probably see a bottom of like in like uh, or, or a touch on the bottom at somewhere between 136 and 139, uh, which is about a little less than 10% lower. I think it's about 8% lower than here. So if it gets that low, that's pretty a pretty attractive spot to buy Airbnb because you're looking at an enterprise value company of sub uh, $80 billion. Again, you know, and it's buying back $6 billion a share, uh, uh, or sorry, $3 billion approximately a share a year. But of that $3 billion, uh, one third, approximately one third of it's just paid by the float. So as long as Airbnb keeps being profitable, as long as their revenue keeps growing, even if the rate of growth slows, you would like to, in theory, see consistent double digit growth. Um, or, or high uh, mid to high teen double digit growth, but that doesn't mean it will always continue that way. So just something to keep an eye on. Uh, but Airbnb is pretty interesting if it does go lower from here. Um, it's also been on this downtrend really since, and it can really draw it since like here, uh, which was the all time high. Uh, again, this was on the weekly. Uh, you know, let's bring this dot all the way back. Sure, a lot of fun. So, you know, you can see that it might get up to 175 if it's there, or if you want to make this like a oops, a little more aggressive, you know, maybe you assume that's the high. So then it, you know, probably explodes sometime in May at 150. So again, if you look at, you know, if you want to put a downtrend there, you're, you're probably looking at something at 175 and. Uh, next year. But again, you don't buy Airbnb or the, the idea of buying Airbnb is, is not, you're not doing it because, Hey, this is an extremely high growth name. That's going to grow revenue by 50, 60, 70% and grow EPS by four five, six X. What you are getting is a company that if it continues buying back shares, at the same rate, it's buying back shares. If it continues generating the same level of cash, the cash pile stays relatively constant. We're not assuming growth in the cash pile, just relatively con or uh, similar cash pile growths. You're looking at a company that realistically will be probably close to 12 to 18 percent higher by the end of the year um at, and then even more so if you buy on any pullbacks so this is a name that's pretty interesting again given their cash situation given everything else it's not a name i would say hey you pound the table and say hey you need to buy it today uh if we do get some sort of sustained pullback outside of just what happened on on the 13th but really an aggressive pullback that pushes us back uh you know you know, three to five percent, something where around 480. It's probably likely this stock trades, you know, down to here. Uh, so this becomes your buy zone. Okay. So just kind of something to be keep an eye on. Uh, you know, maybe the 200 week continues moving up. So you just you just grab it on the 200 week uh, area. Again, this isn't like super sexy stuff, but it's just an interesting name uh, that has a lot of cash and it's using that cash correctly in the sense that they're managing it uh they're managing it between that and the cash flow they're generating from operations they're basically putting i uh, i think the rate is close to 46 percent which is very nice in terms of their expenses assuming a three billion dollar buy uh, a quarter um so yeah that's airbnb next we have robin hood let's pull that oops let's pull that up here and then go over to the shareholder letter. So similar story. Uh, so Robinhood, again, Robinhood has been a little bit of a mess because they're, first of all, they're trading at two times tangible books. So if you're looking at this from a financial perspective, uh, this is not a company for you. It's 18 times EBITDA, also not a company that screams cheap and buy. Um, now that being said, uh, you know, net revenues are up uh, solidly. Uh, over the last 12 months, obviously the stock market's gotten kind of more interesting than just the 2022 years when it's pulling back. Operating expenses are up, uh, though though not as aggressively. EBITDA is, is growth is obviously up as well. Again, Q2 was the high. Like you see, Q2 was the high in all three of these. Uh, and then they did make a positive uh, net income, uh, though 
you'd like to see four quarters of growth. Uh, I don't, you know, you can look at the, 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 the levers. I really just want to focus on, um, uh, how, you know, customer rate is going ticking back up, which is good after 2022. Uh, and then really from 21 into 22, after the GameStop and AMC stuff, uh, Robinhood has kind of stopped seeing outflows and then asked it under, under custody. Again, part of this is related to, just the stock market going up, right? Like it's the same with Schwab as the stock market goes up, their AUM goes up. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they specifically called out that they're pulling clients from fidelity. That makes kind of sense. Uh, a lot of people who trade semi-actively don't like doing it on fidelity. They tend to move elsewhere. Fidelity tends to be focused on retirement assets, which is also what Robinhood is starting to do. And that's the re retirement assets are very important for financial, uh, uh, custodian firms. And that's because they're sticky. If you open up an IRA somewhere, unless you're moving in for consolidation, it's highly likely you're not going to move that IRA, uh, uh, very often, if at all. So here we go, uh, or here we have uh, the retirement accounts. Uh, you know, are going up pretty aggressively. They've om they've over almost they've over doubled uh, in the last 12 months. That's really aggressively. Uh, eight, uh, uh, assets under custodian is, is you know 4x it's, or 5x. It's fantastic. And retirement assets are are, uh, are going up as well, uh, or per account are going up as well. Now they're doing the reason that the way they're doing this is they're getting a one. You can literally transfer your account to get a 1% match that they're depositing into your accounts. So it's free money, especially the larger the account. I think they go up to $100,000. So you literally could get $1,000 just moving your brokerage over to Robinhood. Um, I don't use Robinhood, so don't hold me to that. But I, I think that's what they're doing. So it's 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 very it's a very ugh, apologies. It's a very aggressive. Um, uh, form of marketing, but it's working and the, and people get kind of comfortable with what our app they're using, uh, net deposits. Again, we're growing at four, uh, 21%, uh, and 27% over the last 12 months. Again, just solid, solid, solid though. It does look like they are lapping. Um, they're going to start lapping, uh, some higher numbers. So we'll see if the growth rate, remember this percentage is the growth rate, uh, will stay as high. They, you want to probably see something that remains in the 25, 20 to 25%. Um, again, just, they're growing, right? Like I, I think I don't need to reiterate, keep reiterating these points, but but they Robinhood is growing. Uh, now that being said, uh, oh, also the only thing that's not growing is their share count, which is great. And again, stock-based comp expenses are also going down, uh, which is just fantastic. Um, uh, you know, they're expecting a dilution of continue of two percent annually. So that's uh, or, or dilution is a negative. Uh, uh, or po oh, I'm sorry. They're expecting uh, stock growth of 2%. Okay. So that's not great, but uh, it would be nice to see this number continue going down. Again, the majority of the stock was bought in Q2 to Q3. And this is why it makes uh, where, oh my gosh, they have so many slides. Okay. This is why it makes Robin Hood again, another mini Berkshire. They have $5 billion in corporate cash and investments. They also have, I think, close to another hundred uh, or another billion uh, through, sh through short-term investments. Plus they have a $3 billion credit line, but you don't actually want to touch that, especially given their cash pile. But again, this is a market cap company that is, uh, oops, where's market cap? 11.57. So uh, that's important because they're, they're 5.3 really let's call it six when you add in the 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 short-term uh, investment numbers you know that's generating enough income to basically slice that point set point zero seven off of the uh, off of the share count every year just through interest expenses now you, you'll say sleepy this number is going down uh, it's going down but they clearly use it to rebuy stock right and they say it right here we, they purchased 55 million shares of Robinhood stock for 600 million. That's, and that's where this number money went. Okay. I mean, it was basically in line at $6 billion until they, they started aggressively buying back shares. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, I'm going to say right here, I don't think it's a good thing to buy them at this level, uh, which is like 13, five, uh, no, no in there. 
uh, you don't want to buy any shares there. And the reason is, again, it's at two times tangible book value. You buy back shares as a financial firm to increase tangible book uh, and, and increase that multiple. If you assume two times tangible book, that means every, that when you're buying shares back, that means your shares only having half, a, half an impact. You really want to be buying shares here. And that's really how you manage uh, share buybacks as a financial firm. The, the the closer you could get to tangible book or under tangible book, like in the case of City, uh, the, the more the better uh, the better a, 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 the more accretive the share buybacks are to uh, the underlying entity. So Robinhood's been in this like two years, and I talked about Robinhood last summer uh, when I talked about how uh, I you know. Uh, Carvana, I thought was going to rip higher uh, from thirty dollars and ended up hitting fifty. And how Rivian was done, uh, you guys can go watch that video. I think it was in early July. Um, and uh, the uh, Robinhood has been in this basically since the IPO, right? Like so, the IPO, they get this short squeeze up here to eighty-five dollars, and then it's been all downhill ever since, right? So it just and since really, so the IPO uh, August of twenty-one. Basically, since Jan of 22, uh, they've been flat. Uh, they've actually been down a little bit. So it's it, we're working on a two-year base right now. Um, now, that being said, again, similar story to Airbnb. Uh, this is not a company I'd go out and buy right now. I think that you, you can... You can even, because again, it's a red candle, right? You can assume we're going to retest that $12, which is where the fill will fill this gap. You could probably go maybe along a little bit at $12. If you can get it down here where there's there's a lot of support in this area, which is about $10.50 to $11, that becomes very attractive. Again, uh, there will be at 1.4 times tangible book at that value. Again, uh, and, and again, it, the market capitalization in terms of cash become a very attractive, uh, 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 attractive uh, buy for not just you, but the it's likely that Robinhood will start buying back shares again because it's very clear they're trying to defend the 200, uh, the 200 day moving average. That seems to be where they're aggressively buying, and you see that because you know here and here are the really aggressive areas they seem to have bought. It's not a bad thing. Uh, it just is what it is. Uh, so again, I think if you can get it in the $10 and 50 cents range, that's pretty attractive. Again, it's 30% pullback from here, but Robinhood is a high beta. Uh, see it's beta of 1.74. So that means if the market pulls back 5%, Robinhood is pulling back at least eight to 9%, highly, much more likely it pulls back much more aggressively than there. So, you know, again, this is not a name I would go long right now, but if they manage their float correctly, and again, they uh, and then you, you have the uh, uh, these numbers, and these are the December numbers. Uh, you know, again, growing funded customers, growing assets under custody, growing cash sweeps, growing net deposits, uh, and they don't pay cash on uh, or cash left in their checking or people's investing accounts. Uh, so they're good there, like like IBKR does. So that that drains the ta uh, equity notational volumes. Uh, kind of flat year or, or over the last six months options contract. This is probably something that you don't want to see growing. And it is year over year. It's growing 30, 40% month over month, 10%. Uh, crypto is something you would like to see. And again, crypto has been in the news. So year over year is up 2.5 and month over month up 63 and margin volume is fine at 13% and month over month at 3%. Again, margin is not something you really want to see too, too much of because the, the more the margin goes up, uh, eventually that'll all wash itself through the system and that'll cause a uh, hood to lose assets under custody. Um, it doesn't mean you don't want anyone on a margin. Margin is a good cash generation of the business. But uh, but yeah, again, these are all numbers that are growing in the right direction or going in the right direction. Not grow They're also growing, but going in the right direction. That doesn't mean uh, uh, that doesn't mean you, 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 again, you buy it right here, but it's something again with their large cash balance, they're, they're throwing off again, a uh, hundred, uh, what is it? $30 million a year. Uh, do I have that right? Yeah. No, $300 million a year, excuse me, $300 million a year in cash. Um, you know, $300 million a year in terms of shares is, uh, approximately, uh, what is it? Point three. So it's uh, one fourth and then ten percent, two point five percent. So they can buy back two point five percent of their float every year just from the cash position alone. So uh, and that that assumes they don't need the cash to run their business. And again, their business is inflecting positively. You saw that at the beginning here. Wait here. 
you know, net income is now positive. So as long as this number stays positive, they're able to buy back shares uh, using just the just the, th uh, the interest from their account. So again, if interest rates go higher, CPI was really high yesterday. If interest rates go higher, Airbnb and Robinhood should not go down. And if they do go down, they should be buys uh, because they then make more money off their cash. Now, obviously, there's other considerations. Like if a recession happens, you probably don't want to be long too, too, too much of Airbnb. Uh, but that being said, uh, you know, if the stock market keeps going up or just keeps just being in the news, Robinhood will continue doing well. Airbnb will continue doing well because of the wealth effect. And, uh, you know, these will keep these will keep being interesting companies given their cash position. So these are the two uh, little baby Berkshires and, and little hopefully they're run their CFOs are many, uh, many Warren Buffett's and things will go well. But if you guys have any, if you guys like these names, uh, or these are kind of two more, I don't want to say under the radar names, everyone knows they are, but they're not names that like I would normally cover or names that most, uh, like quote unquote fundamental guys would look at, but Airbnb kind of looks a little, little inexpensive. I would like it about 10 points lower. Uh, Robinhood is not inexpensive and I would like it you know, $2.5 lower. And if it get, if either one gets there, they're probably solid buys, uh, for the, for the long-term account. Uh, again, these are not buy, go out and buy with both hands today. I want to be very clear. Uh, unlike some of my other videos, uh, Anyways, I've been, my name is Sleepy Soul. If, again, if you like these kind of video, these like these videos, please click the like and subscribe button down below. Give me a shout. Uh, give me a uh, uh, shout me out in the comments with any names that you think might be similar to uh, many Berkshires. And uh, I will talk to you all soon. Have a great rest of your evening. Peace.